to okay. sort of talk about uh, your entire career. I want to talk about how you how you got to Army of the Dead, and that sort of okay. it brings me back. That I remember the first pay per view I ever bought was WrestleMania twenty one in right. uh, two thousand five. So I've, yeah. I, I've I've been you know sort of following your career over the years, and to see you become primarily known as an actor to see you yeah. become this this success in both you know small quiet dramas big franchises has been has been wild and i'm wondering if you you reflect on that ever if if the trajectory of your career surprises you or if this is this was the, the goal definitely wasn't the goal and it's uh you know i guess if you say you know sit back and reflect and i think about it and i think wow it's, it's crazy but man usually i'm just so wrapped up in the moment and like day to day and so I don't put a I don't put a whole lot a lot of stock into it. You know, I live a pretty simple life, and I think, you know, my goals are I think my goals are I don't know my goals are very grounded. You know, what I want to achieve in acting, what I want to achieve in film and entertainment is all it's all very grounded, and I do it for very personal reasons. So it's not so I don't get wrapped up into you know how big it is how large it is or how people might perceive it as being like this great big career because my life is so simple my life is so grounded so I don't really I don't really reflect in that manner but but yeah like when you say yeah reflect on it think about it think about it. even like when I think about like I remember Wrestlemania 21 like leading up to it so mm -hmm. vividly that it's I mean it's really it makes me emotional thinking about it I, I barely remember the match. I don't remember the match much at all. I remember breaking down after the match, but I can hardly, I can hardly, you know, recall the match. It's a weird thing. It's just like, a, it's, it's kind of gone. I was also, I, I struggled physically to even going into that match, but I was just, I was so nervous and I, I didn't sleep. I was so wrapped up in that moment because it was someplace that I never thought that I would get. And so mm -hmm. I remember like just being emotionally just, I just broke, literally broke down. I think I cried for days. Like even now thinking about it is making me emotional. I, I it, was, it, was, it was something I never thought because, you know, it was not long before that where I was, um, you know, I was, I was borrowing money from people. I was borrowing money people from me, people to put food on the table. I was borrowing money to buy my kids clothes. I was borrowing money to, you know, for the simple necessities in life. I was living in a a tiny little apartment at one point my wife then then we were driving around in a honda del sol and i don't remember if you <laughs> remember the honda no. del sol but they were tiny little <laughs> two-seaters and that's what we shared and that was a luxury for us to, to even have a car so it was just uh yeah and then think about it now um it's weird and i have you know i'm living a second life here because i was successful as a professional wrestler but then when i left it i i lost everything like i lost everything i went broke and I had to rebuild my name. I was starting over with my name. I was starting over a career, you know, a new career. And at that time in, in Hollywood, I mean, most pro people, were, they, weren't f they weren't familiar with professional wrestling. And if they were, they didn't care. <laughs> mm -hmm. They didn't care how big I was in professional wrestling. It didn't matter to them. They didn't get it. They didn't understand how big professional wrestling was across the world. It was just some kind of bad cliche to them. And so they didn't really understand it. They thought professional wrestlers were just a bunch of oiled up guys who beat each other up in rings and they didn't really know, you know, the details and how much went into professional wrestling and how much people like really loved it and were passionate about it and how, okay. how, how passionate the performers were about it. Um, because I always looked at, for me, professional wrestling wasn't as an art, it was a performance. It was a, a theater of violence. And that's the way I looked at it. And I, that's the way I, you know, that's the way I performed it throughout my career. So it was just, uh, Sorry, I know I'm getting lazy. I'm giving you a really long answer. <laughs> oh, very completely. I, that makes my job so much it's, easier. It's, it's, it's for me to reflect like that. I, the honest answer is I, I just don't because I'm, I'm just so caught up in, in the moment and I'm always looking to, I was, man, I, I, I just have this real big fear of wasting my life. So I'm always looking for the next step ahead, the next move, the next thing that's going to get me to where I want to be and to where I want to be is going to change from now to two years from now. It's, I would mm -hmm. want to be somewhere else. And it's like a, something that it's like a hunger that I can never satisfy. So I don't know where that stems from, probably from desperation, but it's, it's just, it's always something, it's always a dream I'm chasing, constantly chasing. I can't, I can't catch it. I'm just constantly chasing. It's so interesting. You mentioned, you know, how you remember the lead up to a match. You remember, you remember the afterwards, you don't remember, remember the match itself. Is that something you find happens, uh, 
with acting? Is, is it sort of <sighs> similar to the switch to performing in front of a camera for until they say cut, or is that a completely different piece? I think, uh, no, it's, it's so different, man. It's so different. And, it's, and this is why, this is what's been the real struggle for me with acting and which I, what I really love about it, but also find, find so challenging is that there's so much more room to be self-conscious in acting <laughs> because yeah. it's such a detailed, nuanced thing that it's a, it's so, you know, can be so intimate. Whereas professional wrestling, I was always, con I was always confident in my physicality. So to go out in front of a crowd, I was always nervous. I mean, like I was dry heaving before every match, even up to my very last WrestleMania. But when I got out there, I was confident with my physicality. But it was when you put a microphone in my hand, <laughs> when I had to, like to speak words to communicate was mm -hmm. when it was like a struggle for me because I've always had, I've always had, you know, issues with that. Uh, but I was always conf confident with being physical. Um, but it's the intimate things that just, they they hit me at the core of, of my self-consciousness. So it's been a struggle, but it's also one of those things where the more I do, the more comfortable I am, I feel like the better I become. And I feel like it's, that's the same. Like, I always feel like I can be better. I know I can be better. I can do better. And after every job, I want, I want to work more. I want to do more. I want to work with, you know, more actors, better accomplished actors, better accomplished directors. I'm always... I want to work for the, I feel like that's how you become the best. You work with the best and you become the best. It was same mindset I had in wrestling, work with the best, learn from the best, pick their brains, learn everything. They like be a sponge around them, be a student. And it's the same with film. I'm just, I'm ravenous for it, man. I'm ravenous to, to learn about this business. And I think it's all because at the end of the day, like I really just, I love telling stories. I love inspiring people. And so that's, that's what I want to do. That's, you know, that's the stuff that got me through when I was a kid. You know, it was TV and movies and cartoons and the stuff that made me, you know, inspired me and made me want to get out of my, you know, my neighborhood and get away from this, you know, violent atmosphere and and go out and see the world. And and so it's each step of my career, it's been it's become, you know, more and more and more. And I see the world completely different than I did 20, 30 years ago. With wrestling, I feel like it's it's such a immediate response. To yeah. your performance you know if someone in the crowd or the crowd doesn't like what you're doing you yeah. know that <laughs> immediately and yeah. i'm wondering if that's something you miss because you know you film something like army of the dead yeah. you, you, you rap and then you wait months and then you talk about it and then it comes out i'm wondering if that's something you miss i miss it more than i can say it is a drug it is absolutely i understand why people have a hard time letting go of that i understand why professional athletes have a hard time letting mm -hmm. go of that because it is absolutely an addictive drug it's an adrenaline rush like there is nothing, <laughs> there, there is nothing like that response of like a WrestleMania crowd who's just losing their minds. And it's like the weirdest thing to go in in front of a hundred thousand people live and every, you know, that everybody's focused on you. I mean, there, it is such an intense feeling and it is, you know, it's, it, it really is a gamble. I think it's almost, you know, being a gambling addict because you know, it's either going to be that super high where you're just going to be, you know, you just won a million dollar pot or you're going to be that super low where you just lost everything. And mm -hmm. it's like, it's so it's that, that risk, that risk factor. I think just, people just thrive on it. And I was fortunate enough in my career that most of my, <laughs> most of my gambles were, <laughs> were victories. They were yeah. winning that million dollar pot, but I had some stinkers too. <laughs> and they Everybody. settled with it, but it was the stinkers that made me want to be better. It was even, you know, I found out that I was a horrible actor that made me want to be a better actor. So I think it's like kind of those things that drive us, but. There's nothing, nothing like um, a live crowd band. I think every performer will t will tell you the same thing. There's nothing, and it's very easy to get hooked on that, and it's hard to walk away. But I miss it. I miss it daily. Like, and I and I know that I, if I wanted to go back, I know I could. I know they'd mm -hmm. take me back. I know I could go and perform. I wouldn't be able to compete at the same level, but I know they would take me back, and I know I would have something to offer. I just won't do it. I won't. I just I, my career ended. It ended so perfectly. I just wouldn't dare tarnish that. But I, I miss it. I miss it all the time. I hear my music and I'm losing my mind. I'm thinking, God, I miss that. Like my entrance I mean, music just sets me off, man. Puts me in a different I was going to say, it's, it's, one of, uh, it's one of the hypest entrance musics of yeah. all time. It's just, oh, it's just amazing. Just amazing. It's but, so but amazing. The sort of complete opposite spectrum of that, I feel like something that really, you mentioned, you know, when you started going to Hollywood, uh, there's this idea of a wrestler turned actor. Mm. It, it's just sort sure. of, and I think something that really flipped that on its head, especially was your appearance in Blade Runner 2049. Yeah. 
Absolutely. It was such a, it was such a different side of you. And it was such a, it was using your physicality for a tender performance, which I think really just, it woke people up to, to what you can do. And I'm wondering what you remember from filming that scene and what you remember from sort of the aftermath of it. So even the, getting that role was a whole process uh, where Denis did not originally want me for that role. And so anyway, I, I finally won him over <laughs> through a pretty, you know, a series of, uh, you know, pictures and screen tests <laughs> and makeup tests, but I eventually won him over. But I won him over playing Sapper a particular way. When I mm -hmm. did my screen test and my audition test, I played, I played Sapper very ominous. He was very, you know, he was intimidating. And so I was hired, you know, upon those screen tests. And so I thought that's what Denny liked. So when I showed up to film um, and I started performing Sapper like that, like, the, you know, I did my screen test. Mm -hmm. And he was, no, 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 no. <laughs> that's, all, that's all wrong. That's all wrong. And then he, he took me aside. He said, he said, I, you know, Sapper, he's not, um, Sapper's not intimidating. Sapper is not menacing. Sapper's sad. You know, if he, this is guy, you know, he doesn't want to fight. He, he just wants to live. And so I, so right there on the spot, I started reprocessing, you know, Sapper's whole mentality and started performing him very differently. And every take, you know, Denny was coming in and he's saying, I need you to walk with a little, a little more, you know, a little heavier, a little more weight on your shoulders, a little more, you need to be a little bit more broken down. Uh, everything you do even with putting on my glasses, I need you to put your glasses on a certain way. Like you've done it a million times, you do this, but they're very dainty and they should look very dainty in your hands. But I want you to put, so he just like directed me and I was told like, this is what I love. This is why I love working with direct directors mm -hmm. because without him directing me that performance, because he saw it a different way than I did. I never would have, been, I would never would have performed Sapper that way. And I never would have gotten the credit that I did, but that role changed my career because People, they looked at me differently after Guardians. I had definitely had the respect factor as an actor, but mm -hmm. they didn't see me as a well-arranged actor. And after I did Sapper, like a lot of people didn't even make the connection that I was the same person, but the people who yeah. knew were surprised that I can not only do this guy, but I can also do this guy. And now my range is starting to expand and now I'm starting to achieve what I set out to do. And that was be a respected actor. That film opened tons of doors for me, that small part. And that was what I was concerned about. I, I, like, I didn't think anybody would even recognize me in that film. I was there, it was so, so fast. And I was like, they had me out promote, like promoting the film. I was like, why did they have me out here? I'm like barely in the <laughs> film. People aren't even gonna know that I'm in the film. But man, I got so much love for that little part. And it's something that I'm like super grateful. Like I don't overlook that for one second, even though it was a small part. Like I, I just, it did, it just, it just made people look at me differently. And I got a different uh, level of respect as an actor for, for that part. And it also, you know, and in turn, it, it um, got me the part in Dune, which again, I think it was going to have people look at me, look at me differently. I was, I was going to ask, cause you know, you're, you're reuniting with me and it's sort of, it, I'm wondering if it's offering you a chance to do something new in a different way. Is, is, is this yeah. some, is this another new step, new opportunity for you? Oh, for sure. For sure. Not only like I really, we, so we tracked, we, tra we tracked that movie for, for months because I wanted to be a part of it so bad. And we never, I never reached out cause I don't want to be that guy. Like, I don't want to, you know, Hey, Denny is our part. And, you know, <laughs> I never Absolutely. wanted to be that guy, but he actually, um, he called me and he didn't, didn't, we didn't say anything. He didn't say anything about, you know, there's this part. You want to, then she just straight out just asked me if I would come and play this part. And I was so like taken aback, I, I didn't even know what to say, like, except for yeah, obviously, yes. Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> but I, like, that just, like that, like moments like that really gauge uh, how far I've come, you know, as, a, as an actor, because it's not, you know, there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of pride in it for me that a director like Denny would just call and offer me a role in a film that I know is gonna be enormous because people have been waiting for this for years and years and years. And people are so passionate about the novels. So I knew it was going to be huge. And uh, for him to offer me such, you know, integral part of, the, of this film, it's just, I mean, for me, it was a personal statement that, uh, you know, you can, I mean, I can't purchase that type of emotion, like that type of feeling, that sense of pride. I can't, you know, these, these are the few moments in life where I get that, where I feel like my life has been, you know, my life has been worth something. I did something with my life. So my life means something. Oh, you can get me emotional again. <laughs> I'm sorry, but that's that's the job. <laughs> that's the job. 
<laughs> um, but but it, we talked to you, I think a few years ago, and we were talking about Infinity War. Collider was talking to you about Infinity War, and you and you mentioned you didn't read the script, the, the entire yeah. script, because you didn't want yeah. it to be spoiled. I'm wondering if some, with something like Dune, you did the same thing, or when you got the script, you're like, okay, I want to see what the full picture is. Yeah, yeah, I did. You know, I did that, and I, yeah, you know, I did that with Denny, and I did that in Blade Runner as well. And I said, I, I don't want to read the script because I, I like to go and like, especially the stuff I'm excited about. Like, I want to go and watch it as a fan. Mm-hmm. And um, but Denny was very insistent that I read the full script of Blade Runner because he wanted to know how I fit into the film. You know, he wanted to know the whole story, how I fit into the film, so I could, you know, connect my emotions to the whole story, not just to these little moments that we're creating. And so the same thing with Dune. I, I did. I read through the whole script, but I would prefer um, to not read. I would like to. I would prefer to the projects that I'm in that I'm in a you know part like that. Unless I'm the lead. If I'm a lead in a film, I need to know everything mm-hmm. that's going on. I need to know every character and what their arcs are. But for a film like this, where I just serve a certain purpose in a particular moment. I prefer not to read the entire script because I, I, I'm at the end of the day, I'm a fan first and I want to go and watch these films as a, as a fan. So, uh, but yeah, so it's, uh, you know, it's just, I don't know, part of who I am. I guess uh, I'm always, I, I always say fanboy first and that's kind of led me to into every other thing, but yeah, I like to, uh, if I can, you know, prevent myself from spoilers, I, I'd like to do that. I think that the excitement for Dune is kind of, reaching like a fever pitch i think you know when they announced it was coming to streaming it was like oh, but yeah. i think the closer we get to it people just want to see what this movie is and i'm wondering what as a fanboy what was your reaction to the script um i was i was blown away i was blown away i don't think um it's weird because when i when i read blade runner when i read dune it's hard for me to know what their visions are, especially what Denny's vision is, because he's just such, the worlds that he creates are just, they're so enormous. Like I could never, I don't think I could ever direct a film like that. I think my talent would be lying in, lie in a very contained um, drama. I'd like, that's what I would like to do. That's what I aspire to do. But creating these, even like James, like creating these universes, these galaxies, they're just so far over my head. So I read it and I thought it was beautiful. I was emotionally invested in it and the script and the characters, but I don't think that my imagination stretches that far to create these worlds. So it's, it's going to be as big a movie as people are expecting. It's going to be a, the, the event that people are expecting. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Amazing. Yeah. Uh, it's very interesting that you mentioned, you know, you didn't want to go to Denis and ask, uh, you know, is there a role for me? Because you've, you've made no secrets about wanting to play Bane. This, yeah, this yeah. story came out, re- came out recently. And it's, it's very interesting to me because I, I think I feel like the more we have these established universes, the more we have these stories of people going to the studio and being like, I want to play this role. And I'm just wondering yeah. sort of what what was the the moment for you where we're like, I, I'm the person to play, I should be playing Bane. Was it was the a connection with the character was it a just a a yeah there was something about you know there's certain characters that i've uh i don't know i've just kind of latched on to over the past 10 20 years and bane was one of them and not like not like not like no discredit to like tom hardy's version of bane i love i loved his performance i love that film but i just feel like uh you know i'd love i love a crack at it i think i could bring an interesting twist to it and i think i could do the character justice justice uh, not only um, in performance, but also in physicality. Like I'd love that role where I just had to, you know, sit down and, and go back up to like 320 pounds just to portray this character. Like I would like, like that I would happen. Um, but I just feel like I could do this character justice and bring, you know, really bring like a strong uh, performance to him as well and play Bane in a way, you know, that's not only menacing and ominous, but also like freakishly intelligent, you know, and, and just terrifying in, in that manner. And also, like, I, I think that Bane would be the type of character that's so menacing and so terrifying um, and so intelligent that he would ar- hardly ever raise his voice. You know, I think he would almost be like a, like a mis- the c- character I played in Bond, he, Mr. Hinks, was so mm-hmm. terrifying. He, his demeanor hardly ever changed. Actually, he was very happy to be beating the hell out of someone. <laughs> he, was, yeah. like, he, didn't, you know, he wasn't just like super day. overly aggressive. He was just so confident in what he was doing. And I think that's the way I think that's the way I perceive Bane to be as well, because he's not only he would be physically superior, but he would also be mentally superior. And I, I, I just love the I, I love the idea of that, the challenge of playing that character, because I like I like when you can play a brute who's not your 
you know, your predictable brute. He's a brute that he doesn't need to raise his voice because anybody, any big muscular guy can play that guy who's screaming and, and growling and yelling. But if you play a guy who's not only physically menacing, but is soft-spoken, soft-spoken and just as terrifying, even more terrifying when he's speaking to you softly with a smile on his face, then that is a villain. That's a villain I want to play. You know, so that, and that's kind of like the way I see Bane. And that's, and I did. I, I, I don't make any pretense about it. I, so I had a chance to get a, you know, a meeting at WB and I walked in and I, they were talking to me about this and that. And I said, hey, let's talk about, let's talk about Bane. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that happened to me one other time in my career. And I went, had a meeting at Universal and they wanted to talk to me about Fast and Furious. And I said, I'm, I'm not interested. Let's talk about Marcus Phoenix. You know, <laughs> and so what's the action to that? Did yeah. they, they sort of go? Uh, I think or, you, again, no, I think they were a little put off, but you know, it's like, man, you you get a shot. <laughs> I don't yeah. mean to offend anybody. I'm not putting down anything else. I'm just saying, like, this is way more interesting to me. I don't want to, you know, pretend like I'm actually interested in something I'm not. When I mm -hmm. when there's something I'm actually really excited about that you guys, you know, you guys have under control. Like, would you consider me for that? I mean, I don't think there's any harm in that. I'm not trying to be step on anybody else's toes, anybody else's toes or disrespect anybody else. I'm just saying, like, this is what I love, man. I'm I'm seriously passionate about this. Like, I do a good job for you guys on this. So I don't think there's anything wrong with that. And so, but twice in my career that happened, and twice in my career it didn't pan out. <laughs> not not yet, not yet. <laughs> there's, yeah. there's but I'd still, if I had given the opportunity again, I would just, you know, I don't see any harm in chasing your dreams or being honest with someone and saying, man, this is what I really am passionate about. I'd love, you know, if you guys would consider me for this, you know, I'd really, you know, I'd do this justice. You know, I think when people are more personally invested, then it's just going to be a better product. You know? Absolutely. And that sort of leads me to my, to my next thing uh, about the, the superhero character you do have, and the, the, which is Drax. And I know from what I've heard, you really like worked your ass off to get this role. It was, it was not yeah. just, you know, uh, it wasn't just offered to you. You were, you were in contention oh, with other actors. You were, yeah. and I'm wondering, you know, at this point it's, it, you're, it, you're three movies in, but to look yeah. back on that audition process, how much did it mean to you to, to get that validation? They're like, you have the role and you earn, and you earn the role. Um, you know, what's weird, man, is, um, it, uh, that, that role changed the trajectory of my life, man. It's always going to be special to me. Now I'm um, four films in, which I can confirm. <laughs> more, yeah. more, more on the way. Um, I really wish that they would have, <clears throat> I really wish that they would have invested more in Drax, you know, personally, because I think Drax has more of a story to tell. And I think Drax has got a really interesting backstory which they dropped the ball on and that's you know dig, no dig on marvel you know they had their slate and i know what they're focused on and they just that's what they had slated out but man i think they really missed the ball on drax i mean he's got such a great backstory and that would have you know as selfishly as a performer that would have given me the opportunity to show like different sides of drax emotionally uh, and physically as well because if you notice like drax you know although he looks like a badge you look at him drax looks terrifying Drax gets his ass kicked more than any other Marvel character. <laughs> for, someone nickname, for someone nicknamed the Destroyer, he's very often getting his ass kicked. And that's, you know, the whole Destroyer thing, they just threw that out the window. But, you know, there was, you know, was shades of that, you know, that they mentioned in the first film. Mm -hmm. But it's just, I guess they, you know, people fell so in love with the comedic side of, of Drax. They just tapped into that and then they tapped into it more and then they just really dug a hole on it. But I think, I think, uh, you know, you know, we missed a, a huge boat on that character, and I don't think it'll ever come back around. But I, I'm really just looking forward to kind of finishing out this uh, this whole journey with the the cast and everything. Now that's like that's a full that's a full journey. Like we started it together, and not a lot of people, unless you were seriously in the comics, really even knew who the Guardians were. Mm -hmm. And everybody was you know speculating, you know, professional wrestlers playing Drax, and you know, is this going to be the first you know Marvel film to flop? And it was a lot of that until it came out, and people just fell in love with it. And it was almost like, uh, um, and and this is these are not my words, so I don't want to get beaten up by this. But someone <laughs> I, I've heard a lot of people say this is like the new Star Wars, and people are going to look back on Guardians the way we look back, our generation looks back on Star Wars, and that like saying something like that, like that's a bold statement, and that like hits me, and I you know it's yet to be seen, but if it, if we could even if I 
you know, could have somebody feeling that way about Guardians the way I feel and look back on Star Wars. I mean, that's, man, that's a life worth lived, man. That's something special. I mean, that's leaving a, that's a legacy, man. So anyway, I'm really excited to wrap up this whole journey with these guys. I love them. I love the Guardians cast like family. They know it. I think, I think everybody knows it. I'm pretty, <laughs> pretty vocal about it. Yeah. Well, I was, I was going to ask, I mean, not, not to delve too much into the more negative side of it, but there was a bit there where we didn't know what was going on with Guardians 3, with the whole, the whole thing with, with James. And, and you know, yeah. at Collider, we, we were very, very vocally not, yeah. <laughs> not okay with it. But I, I'm yeah. wondering sort of what it was like behind the scenes at that moment and what it's like to have that, you know, in the past now. It was at the time it was awful. And thank you for being vocal. And that was, that was the one thing that, you know, really made it, it just made it okay. And it just helped me a lot because I got, man, I got beat up and I got bashed and I got threatened and I got, you know, I was in a bad spot with Disney as well, but I just, you know, I just felt like I was doing the right thing. And I felt like, you know, a friend, a, a guy who really went out on a limb for me and kind of changed my life was being unfairly attacked. And he, he was unfairly attacked. And then he was unfairly punished. And so I, I just couldn't live with myself if I didn't say anything. But it was at the time, it was awful. Like It was awful. And I literally stayed like on social media at that time, even though I was just getting bashed and beaten up. I stayed on it because I knew if, you know, nobody was speaking up for him, then he was just there was just no chance. And this was like a run. This was like a part of, you know, the climate, the political climate, the you know things that were going on. This was like even much bigger than James. This was like this was like a big message that they were sending. Uh, this was a personal political attack on James Gunn. And, you know, I, you know, Disney, I just don't I think they they jumped the gun. They made a rash decision. Uh, they made a mistake. And I think, you know, eventually they they really did the right thing. And which was another huge statement for Disney to go back and say, hey, guys, we made a mistake. We're going to hire we're hiring James back. I mean, that in itself is a huge statement. And so, yeah, I don't want to overlook that at all. That was something that, like, they really even put themselves out on a limb, which they didn't need to do because they could have moved on and just gone on without, and they still, the you know, next Guardians would have made a buttload of money and people would have come out to see it because they're so invested in it. But they didn't. They did, they did the right thing. They said, hey, guys, we made a mistake. And that in itself is a message. But there was no, there was no way in hell that I was just going to leave James hanging out there to fight for himself and defend himself for something that he wasn't guilty of. It was just a designed attack by horrible people, you know, horrible people. And there's just no way I was just going to, you know, sit there and do nothing about it, say nothing about it. And you guys too, like it, it really helped a lot. And it made me feel good to see that so many like big outlets were coming out and saying, this is not, this is not right. This is not okay. And we can't let these guys get away with it because if this, if they get away with this, this is going to continue to happen and it's going to get worse. And this, you know, this is going to be a snowball going to get bigger and bigger and bigger. Uh, so a lot of people, you know, they really stepped up, up to the plate and, and stood up for James, which needed to happen because he needed help. And uh, so, yeah, thankfully they, they hired him back. And because he was already on Suicide Squad, <laughs> things got really arranged. The Guardians got pushed, but it's done deal, man. We're, we're making, we're making that film, man. We're going into it um, later this year and it's signed, shield and delivered to do it. I'm excited about it. And, uh, and yeah, that's it, man. We'll wrap up the story. And I asked about the Dune script, but what's your sort of first reaction to, to James's Guardians 3 script? I haven't read it. <laughs> I haven't read it yet. <laughs> I haven't read it yet. So, so no I reaction. Haven't read it. Yeah, I haven't read it. And, and I will, and we'll sit down. Eventually we'll go. James is big on rehearsals, big on table reads. So that'll probably be the first time that I'll actually read it is when we go and sit down and do the table read. Yeah, which will be Easy. in November of this year. Yeah. So to jump right from, you know, to James, to Zack Snyder, who is, you know, <clears throat> yeah. I, I just watched the film last night. It's it's one of it's one of the bigger films I've seen in a long in a long, in a long time, and I'm curious because I, this is the first of Zach's films where he was his own cinematographer. Yeah, and I'm wondering what your experience was like uh, working was was if there's any difference between working with him as a director and when he was in sort of cinematographer mode. Um, you know, it's weird because I couldn't distinguish between the two because it was never. There was never any separation. There was never that moment where Zach didn't have a camera in his hands. He does wasn't that moment. Like he was always the, the guy. He was always the guy on camera number one. He was you know a camera. He was there carrying. It was in your face, and you got notes in between takes. But he was always he was just always there. He was always you know right there in the pit with us. He uh, so it, it's hard to you know you know usually 
like when I'm working on a film, I hardly ever, or, you know, in a work-wise way, you know, uh, talk to the DP, you know, I may get notes mm -hmm. here and there, but they usually always come through the director or the first AD, but usually I'm always getting notes from the director. So it was, uh, you know, it was kind of a really great special experience to, you know, have Zach there with a the camera on his shoulder directing you. <laughs> but it was also really something interesting because there were a few times when he was, he wanted particular things. Um, he wanted to capture just like simple little things and performances. And we talked about it and he said, I want to do this again. I want to cover it from here, here. And there he is. He's our, still got the camera and he's covering it a certain way. And these were mostly like very nuanced things. So he was like very up close and personal with that camera. But it was like a, I don't know, a real kind of bonding experience. Like, I just felt like we were in this together, man. We're connected, like we're working together. Uh, so, no, I mean, it was, it was a really special experience. I've never experienced anything like it before or since. And I don't know if I ever will again. It was really something special to see a director just, you know, dragging around a camera and just like going for broke. And not only, because most of the time Zach had a handheld, so... It's not like a camera was setting up and you didn't see anything. He was like discovering stuff as we were going, as we were moving. And that, you know, when you're doing stuff like that, that's when it, like, it makes me feel like an artist. And like, I want to feel like an artist. I feel like it's a performance art. And I, I love, I love thinking about it like that. So I like that he's discovering stuff as we're going and as we're moving, as we're working, as we're filming and things are changing. So it's not just something that's so stiff. It's something on paper or something that we mm -hmm. we're going to shoot it from this way. We're going to shoot it from that way. <laughs> it's like, if you see, it's like this tiny little angle that he thinks may be interesting. He's got a camera and he's just up in there. And, uh, and, you know, I love that and I respect it. And I learned from it, you know, which is the most important thing. I really wanted to learn, learn from Zach. I wish I could have talked a little bit more. Man, that flew by. Head. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I, but it was, it was a pleasure talking to you, man. Awesome, yeah, dude. Thank you. We'll do it again, from man. the ring into, into the movies and everything, it's, it's been a, it's been wild to watch your career, and it's been one it's yeah. been wonderful to watch your career. So thanks, again, man. Thank man. you for appreciate it, man. Time.